Hello everyone, my name is Daniel and I'm a programmer and an artist, and I just saw a comment on the uh, deform match quads video asking about if you could do that but keep the proportions of whatever object you are instancing on the face. So if the if it was a different shape than the face you're instancing on, could you make it just fit inside of the face instead of... I was like, hey, I think I've already made a node that can do that, but it's um, part of this next update I'm working on for my geometry nodes. So I'm not quite ready to release all of those nodes yet, because I'm still working on them and testing, but I thought I could go ahead and go through this instance on faces node, because it's fairly simple and um, it will eventually be in the set, but it is not currently. So I call this node the instance on faces node. Um, it does exactly what its name suggests. It lets you instance meshes on the faces of an object. That's similar to the deform match quads, but it doesn't deform and they don't end up as a mesh at the end. They're still instances because um, for various reasons, I, I specifically wanted the output of this node to be instances, not a mesh. If you wanted to make it a mesh, you could just add realize instances at the end. That's simple enough. As far as the options for the node, um, there's an option to calculate the centers. If you don't calculate the centers, it um, uses the origin point. But if you don't have your origins in the centers, that can make it the objects not line up with the quads you have. This is the mesh, by the way. The approximate z-scale option lets you control or guess how um, if the object should be scaled on a z-axis at all. I have it set up where the z-axis always aligns with the normal of the face. Um, so the z-scale then becomes the, sort of the depth of the object. If you turn it on, it just takes the average of the scaling factors for the x and y-axis and uses that as the z-axis scale. Um, then there's an option for uniform scale. This is what the comment was referring to. If you turn that on, then whatever shape the object was that you're instancing, it'll have that same shape. It might be larger or smaller, but um, the ratio width to height will be the same. And you can set that to either be on matching the x-axis, matching the y-axis. So, so here they're all the same width. Here they're all the same height. Or you can make it the average of the two then there's an input for the instances. This is the mesh that's going to be copied on all the faces. I have it as a collection. Um, I might eventually add an option, an or option for an object as well. But um, I wanted it, I mainly wanted it to be able to have a collection of, um, in this case, the example sort of windows. And then you can instance different objects from that collection on different faces and I wanted you to be able to control that which is why there's an ID attribute currently that's a vertex group that you assign a number to and then based on what that number is that's the instance that's get, that gets picked for that face that's kind of a pain though because the vertex groups doesn't let you assign a number um, I don't think there's any way to assign a number greater than one and since you can't assign a value greater than one, say you had 10 objects in your collection, well then your weights for the different indexes might be like 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3. Well, if you had an 11th object or five more objects, well now all of your weights are off. Um, it doesn't scale, so that's, so that's not great. That's one of the things I want to change um, before I release it probably. I don't know what the best way to do that is actually though. Um, what I really want is a way to assign like an integer attribute to the faces. Um, it could possibly be done with materials um, in the material index. Anyway, that's a problem I haven't quite solved yet. Or if you don't want to assign the indexes, which means that if we duplicate this face, we'll get this same window. And if we duplicate this face, we'll get the same sort of shutter. You can instead check random IDs and it'll just assign something to each face randomly. So those are all the options the node has as far as what you could use it for. Um, the example I'm thinking of here is like sticking windows on the face of a building. You could use it to place decorations around a trim. Um, the other thing that's really cool about this because it's instances, like I said, if you want to at the end here, you could add a realize instances to make it a mesh if that was um, if you wanted to like deform it afterwards but um, the other thing that's cool is because it's instances you can actually just realize or make instances real 
and then all of your um, it makes duplicate objects so the object data is duplicated um, and places them where they were placed by the geometry node. So that's a handy thing if you want to have a bunch of linked, create a bunch of linked um, object data. All right, first is just a quick overview of the node tree. Up here, these nodes, um, they take the input geometry, that's our faces. We're gonna do some simple math and calculations, assign them an ID for which instance they should spawn and, and, um, and count how many there are, stuff like that. Then over here, we do some math on our instances. We're going to calculate bounding boxes for each of them, capture the sizes of those bounding boxes as attributes, um, and do some things all with the bounding boxes, basically. Then up here, we're going to take our input faces, and for each face, we're going to measure the size of its edges. Um, and we're going to take those sizes down here, then. We're going to use that information to scale our instances so that they will fit correctly inside of our faces. Um, then after we've scaled them, we've got to move them to where the faces are, and then we have to rotate them so that they're aligned to match the faces. So that's kind of the, the major parts of this no group. Let's go through. So starting at the beginning here, we have our geometry input. That's just a bunch of faces. Um, First thing we need to know is how many there are, so we're just going to get a count, and then we're going to duplicate elements to, for that amount. So we have one instance for each face. The um, I came up with a better way of doing this later on, I think, where I um, instance random objects on points. The way this one works is I duplicate the entire collection for each face, and then I'm deleting part of it. That might be inefficient and slow. I don't know. You can also use you just create a bunch of points, and then create random instances on the points. I did that in the random arrays video. I, f I figured out that that was probably a better way to do this, but I haven't updated this one yet. Um, so anyway, we have our faces. We know how many there are. We want to create duplicates. We want to create duplicates of our instances. We need to know some stuff about the instances first. So over here we have our input collection. Looks like this. Um, we're resetting all of the objects, separating the children and the original relative doesn't matter, I don't think. Then we want to capture an attribute on each of the instances, and that attribute's going to be the index. Um, if there's seven of them, they'll each have a different ID assigned. Then we want to capture an attribute on them that's the size of the object, the minimum and maximum bounding box points. Um, and we've looked at this node before in one of the videos, the bounds at index node skip over it pretty much, but what it does is it takes all the instances, it makes a bounding box around each instance, and then looks at the zeroth and seventh vertex positions because those correspond to the minimum and maximum vectors of the bounding box. And it does that for each instance, which means we know how big they all are. I think I did that, I think I go through that note in the random arrays video as well. Um, anyway, once we have those, we wanna capture those vectors on as attributes on the instances. Then we want to subtract the minimum from the maximum, which gives us the size of the bounding box. If we then scale it by half, we'll get and add it to the minimum, we'll get the position of the center of the bounding box, which we'll use if we have if we check the calculate centers box. So we'll get back to that one. Um, anyway, once we have for all of our instances calculated the bounding box sizes, we can then and captured those attributes on the instances, we can then duplicate those instances. And then we will have a copy of the entire collection for each um, face in our input mesh. Then here we have the sample index node. It's going to look at the ID attribute if one is assigned. That's the vertex group that decides which instance should be spawned on each face. Um, this is probably going to change. I really want it to be a whole integer number. So you can pick like 0, 1, 2 instead of you know, random 0 0.33, 0 0.66 values. Um, anyway, the way it works right now is we sample that from that vertex group off the face. Once we have whatever that value is, we multiply it by the number of instances, and then we floor it to turn it into an integer, and then that goes into the switch whether, whether or not we use random IDs. If we use random IDs, um, we want zero or one less than the instance count and um, as a, the maximum, and then the ID should be the duplicate index. 
so that we get a different value for each face. So then once we have that index value, whether we assigned it manually or calculated it randomly, um, we will just check if the index of the instance in the collection does not equal that number that we picked. And if that's true, we're going to delete the instance. So we go from having the entire collection copied times the number of faces to having an instance copied for each face, but the rest of the collection was deleted. Like I said, that's probably not the most efficient way to do it. What I think is the most efficient way to do it was to create a number of points equal to the number of faces, then uh, spawn instances on those points using the instances on points node with the pick instance checkbox on, and then you'll get random ones without creating more than you need. But I haven't updated this. If you want to see how you do that, it's in the random arrays video. So now we have our single instance per face. The next thing we're going to do is scale, rotate, and position it. Um, but we can't do that until we know some information about the faces. I'm pretty sure you've looked at this verts of face node before. I think that's in the um, deform match quads video. But we're, we have this crazy sorting algorithm to try to make the, the order of the vertices in the face consistent as best we can. And then we take the index of our face corners and we sample them all get the position of those vertices and then assign them to the faces as four different vectors and as well as the normal. Once we have our the four corners of our face in the normal direction, we're going to add all of the corners together. And then we're going to scale them by 0.25, which is the same as dividing them by four. So that gives us the average position of the four corners, which will be the center of the face. We're going to use that to set the position eventually. Then we have the normal direction. If we align a, a z-axis to that vector, we'll have a rotation where the object will point, the z-axis will point in the same direction as the normal. If we then take that rotation and align its y-axis, pivoting around the z-axis to our first edge, then we can make something where the vertical edge lines up with the y-axis. Um, obviously, that assumes that the y-axis is the one you want to be up. Um, you could probably add a bunch of complicated ways to control that, but it's probably simpler in this case to just edit your input geometry so that the y-axis is up, the z-axis is forward, and the x-axis is sideways. Once we've applied those two rotations, we have, a, I assume it's a quaternion, but this rotation value that we can use at the end to rotate the instances. The third thing we need to know is how big the face is, so we're just going to subtract the first two vertices from each other and the second two from each other and get the length of those. Um, if you wanted to add a little more to this, you could subtract the other vertical and horizontal edges from each other, add them together, get the length of all four, and then add the two horizontal edges together and add the two vertical edges together and divide them by two or take the minimum or the maximum, depending on what you want to do. It just makes it more complicated. I think this works for the majority of cases. All right. Now we have our the size of our faces, we have the orientation of our faces, and we have the location of our faces. So all we have to do is apply those three values to our instances. So the first one we're going to do is to scale the instances. That looks like this. They all get scaled in place. And then the um, all we have to do is figure out how we're going to calculate this scale value. So we have to start all the way back here where we calculated the size of our bounding box. We're going to bring that value over and split it apart. Then we're going to divide 1 by the x value and 1 by the y value to get a value that represents how many of those objects you could fit in one meter of space. If we then multiply that value by the x and y sizes of our face edges, we'll get the scale factor we need to apply to the x and y axes to make them fit inside of the face that they're assigned to. If we then add those two factors together and divide them by 2, we'll get the average scaling factor we need to apply to, to the instances and we're going to use that to for the approximate z scale as well as the uniform scale potentially. Then here we have where you can pick the scale axis if you um, want uniform scale to be true. It can either be set to fit to the size of the x-axis, fit to the size of the y-axis, or the average of the two. So here we're just going to check what that integer value is equal to, one, two, or three. Then we're going to output a boolean, which is 0 and 1, essentially. We're going to multiply the x, the y, and the average by 
their corresponding Boolean values and then add them all together. Only one of these will be true, so only one of these will actually output a value. Then we just have a switch. Do you want uniform scale or not? If you don't, we use the X and Y values respectively. If you do want uniform scale, they both get this value we calculated here, whether it was based on the x-axis, based on the y-axis, or based on the average. Then if you use the approximate z-scale option, we have a switch here. Um, it either uses, actually, this needs to be exposed, not a named attribute. Um, all right, so we'll just call that attribute or z-scale, and then if you turn approximate z-scale off, you can still control how you can still control how uh, deep the object goes. Then we're just going to combine x, y, z. So we have our x-axis scaling factor, our y-axis scaling factor, however they were calculated. And then we have our z-axis scaling factor, however it was calculated. Um, now that we have a vector, we can apply that to the instances um, using the scale instances node. We're back to where we started. The next thing we want to do is set the position of all of the instances. That looks like this. Um, to do that, we need to know where they should go. The first one comes from the sum of all of the vertices divided by four. And then, then the offset is for calculate centers. Um, we're, if calculate centers is on, we're going to add the difference between the origin point and the center of the bounding box to the position. But we have to also take into account that the object could be rotated. So we have this vector rotate using the same rotation that's applied to the instances. So we're going to rotate a vector. That vector comes from all the way back here where we calculated the size, scale it by half, and added it to the minimum to get the center point. Then we're going to come over here and multiply that vector by negative 1, which is essentially like saying, do we want to move the origin point to the center of the geometry, or do we want to move the geometry so that it's at the origin point? And we want to move the geometry so that we can rotate it around 0, 0. Um, then once we have that vector, we're going to scale it the same as we scaled the object. Because if we make the object half as wide, well, then the center is half as far over. And then we're going to take that vector and rotate it by the same rotation we're going to apply to the instance. And then um, we can just put that into the switch. Calculate centers true, false. If it's false, we don't offset it at all. If it's true, that's the value we use as the offset. Set the position. Offset it if calculate centers is on. And then finally, we're just going to rotate the instances to make them align to the face. And that's, again, the rotation we calculated with these two align Euler to vector nodes. All right, so that's it for this one. Hopefully you found it interesting and I uh, was able to answer some questions about how to fit things in a face. Um, this node is going to be available in my geometry nodes eventually, but um, it's not ready yet. I'm still testing it. Um, if I just show here, this is what I've been working on. And it's sort of what the new nodes that will be in the next update should let you do stuff like this, which hopefully is exciting. Um, I don't know when these nodes will be out. I'm still testing them and trying to make sure that there's a good workflow around them and stuff. So I want to make sure I get that right before I put them out and have to do a bunch of updates. Um, because of that, I feel like I've covered most of the nodes I've put out as much as I want to. Um, so I've kind of been short on ideas, which is why I haven't uploaded anything recently. But if you have ideas or questions about how to do stuff with nodes, I'm willing to at least entertain the idea and if I think it's interesting, I would be happy to make a video about it. So um, if you have questions about stuff, feel free to ask. Because, yeah, I, I didn't have any ideas for videos this week, so I've been busy working on this. Anyway, these are all my Geometry Node assets. They're available on Gumroad as a collection. Um, if you could give me something for them, that'd be great. Otherwise, they're available for free. And I am working on more things as I have time. Like I said, hopefully you found it interesting. That's it for this one. Thanks for watching.